Hey guys, welcome back. Day 8, integrated rate laws. Alright, so this is, the we want to ask the change of concentration with time. So how does my concentration change with time? Right? And so we know as a reaction proceeds, oh, what do I do? As a reaction proceeds, right? The concentration of reactants and products change. Right? We want to know how. How how do they change? Right? This is good. Right? This is when we take medicine, the prime example of this, right? You can only take this every what four to six hours. Well it depends on your metabolism. It depends on several other things, right? It depends on your body weight. It depends on right uh, how healthy you are per se. Like there's some factors there, but we know that we can't just take 800 milligrams of ibuprofen every hour. That would not be a good thing to do for a 24-hour period, right? So we know this, and so what's going on here? How do we tell how the reaction proceeds with time, right? And it depends on reaction order. Right, that's what we did the last time, right? This is from the experiment. Reaction order is always determined from experiment. And that experiment was the method of initial rates. All right, so if I have a reactant, and that reactant is going to be A. A is my reactant, and it's going to go and react to products. Right, so it doesn't matter what A is, A could be anything. All right, so for what we're going to call a first order reaction, All right? First order reaction, what do we have? So I have A going to products, and so if I have A still going to products. There are two things we can write. We can write we can write write the relative rate, and we can write the the rate law. So what's the relative rate? Well, the relative rate would be where the rate would equal negative change in concentration of A with the change in time. All right, the rate law has to do with rate equals k, the rate constant k, times the concentration of A to the first power, of course, because it's first order, right? The first power. All right, so we got the rate and the rate law, okay? The relative rate and the rate law. Now, the relative rate can be any given, right, delta T can be any amount. The rate law also predicts, if I know the concentration, it gives me the rate with the rate constant K. So these purple rates are the same, aren't they, at any given time? Right, aren't, isn't this rate going to be equal to that rate? Okay, because the rate's the rate. If it's 5 molarity per second or 0.25 molarity per second, whatever the rate is, it's the rate. Which means negative change in concentration of A over time, over DT. Whoa, I don't know why it keeps going down on me like that. DT is going to be equal to K times concentration of A. All right, that works. Just like 5 times 4 is the same thing as 10 times 2. All right, it's the same. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate my time 
and concentration. Okay, second way, my time and concentration terms, I'm also going to get the negative sign by the constants. So I'm going to have the change in concentration of A over the concentration of A is equal to negative K dt. And some of you may understand where we're going with this. Alright, and if you don't, that's quite okay. Alright, just so we know, this would look exactly like something from another course. If you're in that course, so that's green. Alright, make a little window here. Alright, this would look like exactly like one over x dx, all right, and k dt. Well, actually, I'm going to do it this way. That might look familiar to some of you. And if it does not look familiar, that's okay. It doesn't have to look familiar. All right, so I have this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to what we call integrate. If you don't know, if you do know, that's great. And for our integration purposes, right, we're going to, this is a big S, that's a big S, and we're going from the concentration of A at time 0, right, to time T, okay, and that's going to be 1 over the concentration of A. Right, times the change, delta A, concentration A, equals, now, oh, that's still blue, don't want blue, equals negative, now the constant comes out front of the integral, and some of you know that, some of you don't, All right, from T equals 0 to T, uh, delta T. All right. Now, at this point, we're going to use what I call in class, I use this all the time, my calculus. Oh, whoa. Wand. All right? Because we don't necessarily have to know this. We don't have to know how to integrate to do the class. All right? We're going to get the result. And the result is the natural log of the concentration of A whatever that reactant is at time t minus the natural log of the concentration of A at time 0 is equal to negative k, the rate constant, t. Alright, so you've seen these before. So this, now another way to write this will be the natural log of the concentration of A at time T over A0 equals negative KT the E form so E would be you know base E natural log base E this would be the concentration of A at time T over the concentration of A at time 0 is equal to E to the negative KT and just know that natural log and E are the same button on your calculator right natural log is base E log base E Sometimes you might have seen this as y equals y o e to the negative k t. You might have seen that function before. All right, first order kinetics. All right, and these are our first order rate laws. Now, do you need to have these memorized? Of course not. But those are the, that's your first order rate laws. How the concentration varies with time. All right.
that's that's first order. We're going to do a couple more orders, but that's first order. Now, next up would be Half-Life, and we're going to do first order, Half-Life, Half-Life. All right, and what is Half-Life? This is the time required for the concentration of my reactant, A, any reactant, which, to fall to one half of its original value or amount okay so we're going to drive this formula for you concentration of a at time zero is two and concentration of a at time t one half would be one so that's half-life right so if I use the equation, the natural log concentration at A at time T minus the natural log concentration at A times zero is negative KT. All right, we know what these are. Okay. All right. We have natural log of one equal minus natural log of 2 equals negative kt. Well, the natural log of 1 happens to be 0. And so, and we can plus positive, right? So, natural log of 2 over k is t 1 half. That would be our first order half-life. Now in the book, it might say 0. Point, what is it, 693? Natural log of 2 over k is t one half. Right, I'm pretty sure that's the natural log of 2. If I remember 0. 0.693. Yeah, but it's got it's actually 6.693147180606. So for me, in my calculator, typing ln2 closing the parentheses is actually less keystrokes than 0 0.693. All right, so for me and my personal calculator, the TI-83 that I've had for more than 20 years now, all right, it's actually faster for me to hit the LN button, natural log button, to close the parentheses. That's actually less keystrokes for me than 0.693. So you can use either one. You'll get virtually the same answer, especially the three sig figs. But just you know, that's what your author did. You know, your author's a little older than me, and so they didn't have the nice TI-83 calculators when they went through school. So that's first order. All right. So now we have second order. We still have reactant A. And that reactant A is going to products. Okay, so we have the relative rate. And the rate law. Again, the rate law comes from experiment. The relative rate would be rate equals negative change in concentration of A, change in time. And the rate law, rate equals the rate constant K times the concentration of A, but in this case, it's squared, right? All right, so the rates, of course, are equal to each other, right? This rate equals this rate, so that means negative change in concentration of A over the change in time equals K times the concentration of A squared. Get everything 
written for us. All right. Now, I'm going to separate the time in concentration, right? We're going to get concentration over and time. Oh, and I missed the squared. Almost missed the squared. So we're going to get the change in concentration of A over the concentration of A squared equals negative K dt. All right, and K dt. Now, you might realize that this is the same thing as 1 over x squared dx, right? Now, it, again, calculus 1, we're going to integrate, and I'm going to integrate. I'll use, um, what haven't I used here? I haven't used this color. We're going to integrate from concentration of A0 to concentration of AT t equals 0 to t, right? We're going to integrate, and here's what we get, okay? 1 over the concentration of A at time t, right, equals K times t plus 1 over the original concentration of A. So there we go. That's second order um, integrated rate law. And then second order half-life. So this is our second order integrated rate law. And second order half-life. Second order half-life, right, T1 half would be equal to 1 over the rate constant k multiplied by the original concentration of A. There we go. So there's your second order. Equations. Alright. Again, do not memorize these. You might if you do enough problems, but do not memorize these. Now, one thing I want to point out, what's different here, is that the original concentration of A is in the half-life. Whereas in first order, it's concentration independent. So it doesn't matter if you have a gram, a milligram, a gram, a kilogram, a megagram. It doesn't matter how much mass you have. After one half-life, half of it's gone which is kind of crazy. So if you had one gram and the half-life was X years, after X years you have half a gram. If you have 10 kilograms, after X years you have five kilograms. That's really kind of weird, isn't it? But that's just the rate at which it decays, right? Whatever our substance is, okay? And so it's kind of weird, but so yes, that means that if you had more mass, you lose a lot more of the substance but that's just how first that's how this breaks down it's kind of weird it's kind of an interesting thing all right last but not least for us for our class is zero order all right we still have eight products all right my rate so my relative rate would be rate is equal to negative change in concentration of A, change in time. And my rate law would be rate equals K. And that's really it, because why? Because the concentration of A raised to the zero power would be just a, right? So the rate technically equals K. Uh, purple. The rate will equal K. That's kind of fun. All right. So we get negative 
change in concentration to A, change in time equals K. There we go. So you again you would rearrange, and so I would get the change. Oh, that's, that's blue. Let's just put A down. I put a triangle again. A. There we go. So change concentration A equals negative K D T. We'll integrate this, and again, don't worry about it. If you know how to integrate, wonderful. If you don't, that's wonderful as well. So we get what we get if we integrate, do the integrations, right, from concentration of A0 to concentration of A at time T, T equals 0 to T. I get 1. No, I don't get 1. I get concentration of A. At time t equals negative kt plus the original concentration of A. And that's my zero order integrated rate law. Half life t one half equals the original concentration over 2k. All right, so that is zero order integrated rate law. And zero order kinetics. Not zero order half life, sorry. Zero order half life. Okay. So we have a table here summarizing what's going on. So we have our orders zero, one, and two. All right? One is the most common, but all three of these will happen in our book. It gives you the rate law, the units of K, and the integrated rate law. And then the straight line plot. We really like straight line plots, right? Because look what the slope gives us each time. The slope, if I, if I do slope, slope, I use orange because I've been using orange for K. The slope is K. We like to know that, right? That's the rate of change. We like to have straight lines. Straight lines are really nice, okay? And there's a half-life expression, T1 half, right here. So that's fun. So we have the integrated rate laws and T1 half. So that helps us. All right. And again, for I do T1 half is the natural log of 2 over K. I think that's faster. But you do what you want to do there. So that's, that's the integrated rate laws. That's it. So this helps us predict how the concentration changes with time. Very important. So now what's next is a bunch of examples in the next videos. A bunch of examples that we're going to do. We're going to do some easy ones. We're going to do some more difficult ones. But no matter what we're going to do, that's we're going to do them all. So that way you understand how to do them. And, and we'll go on from there. So hopefully that helps. And we'll see you in the next one.